Hello all of you. Today we will talk about the Cold War. In 1945, World War II ended with the defeat of the fascists, Europe was devastated. Countries like Britain and France gradually lost their position and influence. Meanwhile, the US and the Soviet Union emerged as world superpowers, but carried two opposing political ideologies. It was this conflict that started in a historical period, known as, Cold War. After the Yalta Conference in February 1945, to reorganize the world after the war, the parties discussed and decided to divide Europe into two blocks with two social systems. In Western Europe, it represents traditional capitalism, which operates the economy through private ownership of property and means of production. The free environment promotes business investment, but creates a clear gap between rich and poor. Capitalist owners exploit workers' labor in order to maximize profits. In Eastern Europe, led by the Soviet Union representing either socialist or communist, operated an economy based on public ownership. Advocates to eliminate the exploitation of the bourgeoisie and create an equal society. People are allowed to work according to their capacity and enjoy according to their needs. Germany alone was divided into four occupation zones. West Germany was occupied by British, French and American troops. And East Germany assigned Soviet troops to occupy, the capital was divided by the Berlin Wall. In July 1948, the three countries of the United States, Great Britain, and France united the three occupation zones to establish the Federal Republic of Germany, following the capitalist path. In the East the Soviet Union responded by establishing the German Democratic Republic, following the socialist path and becoming a satellite state of the Soviet Union. On April 25, 1945 in San Francisco, the United States and 50 countries established the United Nations, one of the largest and most important organizations in maintaining world peace and security. The United Nations promotes cooperative relations between countries to this day. In 1947, the Buman Doctrine was born, marking the beginning of the Cold War. According to the doctrine, the United States will support any country they see is threatened by communism. The Comprehensive Economic War began. The United States implemented the Marshall Plan to provide $17 billion in aid, rebuild Western Europe, and prevent the spread of communism. In addition, anti-communist propaganda also appeared in every media. In response to the US, the Soviet Union also propagated anti-capitalist propaganda and established the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance SEV to create an economic alliance between the socialist countries in Eastern Europe. In addition, the two superpowers also compete in many fields of science, technology, space and military. On August 29, 1949, the Soviet Union successfully tested the atomic bomb that broke the monopoly of US nuclear technology. That same year, NATO was established based on the North Atlantic Treaty, signed between the United States and Western European countries to combat the increasing threat of the Soviet Union. To deal with NATO, the Soviet Union also established the Warsaw Military Alliance in 1955. During the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union had never once declared war directly. Instead, they provide weapons and money to their allies to fight with the other side's allies, with their own strategic benefits. Greece can be considered the site of the first proxy war. The Greek Communist Party supported by the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia began a civil war against the Greek national government supported by Britain and the United States. The war lasted for three years, when Yugoslavia came into conflict with the Soviet Union and stopped aid to the Communists. As a result, the Greek National Army was victorious. Later, Greece joined the Western Allies. In Asia, China is also experiencing a civil war between the Kuomintang and the Communist Party. Although the Kuomintang had many times the number of troops, they frequently purged each other internally. The soldiers were tired after World War II and the economy was hyperinflationary due to corruption, so after three years of war, the Communist Party led by Mao Zedong with the support of the people won the victory. The Communist Party controlled mainland China, establishing the People's Republic of China. The nationalist faction led by Chiang Kai-shek admitted defeat and was forced to withdraw to Taiwan. The victory of the Communist Party of China made the socialist system connected from Europe to Asia. Politically victorious, the Soviet Union provided aid to North Korea to advance to the south. The North Korean army attacked, 
pushing the South Korean army almost to the end. The United Nations quickly established an emergency force with troops from 16 countries to intervene in the war. Allied forces and South Korea simultaneously counterattacked, forcing the North Korean army to close to the northern border. This made China feel threatened, so it immediately entered the war under the pretext of protecting national security. More than a million Chinese volunteer troops crossed the border to coordinate with the North Korean army. They counterattacked like a hurricane with the human sea strategy. China and North Korea have successfully repelled South Korean and Western armies. When the two sides struggled to the 38th parallel, they were deadlocked. The war ended with a ceasefire in 1953. After the war in Korea, the US aided France in reinvading their colonies in Indochina, including Vietnam. In 1954, the government of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, also supported by the Soviet Union and China, fought fiercely and successfully. Vietnam defeated France in the Battle of Dien Bien Phu, forcing France to sit at the negotiating table and sign the Geneva Agreement. France then withdrew from its Indochina colonies. In order to prevent communism in Indochina, the US quickly established the Republic of Vietnam regime in the south, confronting the communist regime in the north, separated by the 17th parallel. In 1956, under the pretext that Egypt announced the nationalization of the Suez Canal, the three countries of Britain, France, and Israel launched an attack on Egyptian territory. They were quite successful in occupying the Suez Canal. But the Soviet Union threatened to use nuclear weapons to support Egypt, causing the U.S. to fear a new world war. The U.S. threatened and embargoed Israel and cut off oil supplies to Britain if the coalition refused to withdraw from Egypt. Relations between Britain, France and the United States were seriously damaged after this event. On October 4, 1957, the whole world was shocked and the Soviet Union successfully launched the first artificial satellite into Earth orbit. To regain the upper hand in science and technology, the United States introduced educational reforms, including the creation of NASA and later the successful landing of the first man on the moon. The start of a technology and space race. In Latin America, the United States established a backyard system for itself and ensured that there was no place for communism. However, in 1959, the Cuban Revolution succeeded and a communist government was established. CIA The U.S. Central Intelligence Agency recruited Cuban exiles with anti-communist ideology to launch an invasion of the Bay of Pigs to overthrow the Cuban government. The CIA also deployed nearly 638 assassination attempts on Cuban leader Fidel Castro, but all were unsuccessful. The Bay of Pigs invasion campaign also failed miserably. When the Soviet Union learned of the news, it immediately sent troops and warships to Cuba to deploy medium-range missiles aimed directly at the U.S. Tensions peaked when the two naval forces were ready to declare war on each other. People hold their breath waiting for a third world war. But through negotiations, the Soviet Union agreed to withdraw all missiles from Cuba. In return, the United States must promise not to invade Cuba again. And must help get rid of all the missiles from Italy and Turkey. Returning to Vietnam, the South Vietnamese government did not recognize the Geneva Treaty and refused to hold a general election to unify the two regions. At the same time, implementing anti-communist policies led the North to form the National Front for the Liberation of the South, launching an all-out offensive with guerrilla campaigns with support from the Soviet Union and China. Both sides fought fiercely for many years and became more and more fierce. America spent hundreds of billions of dollars on this war and it became one of the most expensive wars in history. Right in the US, the people's wave of protest against the war increased and public opinion became increasingly bitter when realizing that the war took place in an unexpected direction. The US decided to withdraw in 1973. Two years later, the communists won and Vietnam was reunified. After the Vietnam War, the Soviet Union seized the opportunity to gain Pan-African political influence by sponsoring communist organizations and movements there. On the other hand, the Soviet Union entered Afghanistan to support the communist government against the Mujahideen rebels, an Islamic organization funded by the West. The Chinese government viewed the Soviet intervention as an act of aggression, which seriously threatened the western border. Thus, China joined an alliance with the United States to jointly finance the strategy of resistance against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. In Europe, 
France has left NATO because of conflicts with the US. The Soviet Union upgraded its missile system and aimed directly at Western Europe, prompting the United States to install more missiles in response and creating a missile race in Europe. The Cold War now costs both superpowers a lot of resources, but neither side withdraws. Now in Central America, a former spy recruited by the CIA to fight communism in Panama, is now an anti-American dictator. He turned Panama into a hub for money laundering and transporting drugs to the US and Europe. Under the pretext of protecting democracy and human rights, the United States launched a massive invasion of Panama with 27,000 troops, sending the whole city into war. As a result, Manuel was overthrown and sent to the US to be sentenced to 30 years in prison. The important thing is that the US has regained control of the Panama Canal. The invasion was harshly condemned in the international arena. But it didn't work because now the Soviet Union was weakening due to spending too much on the military budget, the Soviet Union began to run out of money. So the Soviet Union decided to stop funding communist movements in Africa and withdraw all troops from Afghanistan. The Soviet war in Afghanistan is also likened to an American war in Vietnam. Because it cost thousands of lives and hundreds of millions of dollars. Significantly weakened the military power and economy of the Soviet Union. By 1990, the Soviet Union system was on the verge of collapse, as communist leaders in the Warsaw Pact gradually lost power. Reforms and elections spread throughout Eastern Europe. The Berlin Wall was torn down and Germany was reunified. The Soviet Union tried to reform and open the economy but failed. In 1991, the Soviet Union disintegrated and was split into 15 independent republics, leading to the collapse of the socialist system in Eastern Europe. Along with that was the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact and the SEV Mutual Economic Assistance Council, marking the end of the Bipolar Order and the Cold War. America became the only superpower in the world. NATO continues to exist, expands, and is ready to intervene in areas beyond the borders of member countries. During the Cold War, the national liberation movements of the colonial countries grew stronger and spread all over the world. From the end of the 20th century and into the 21st century, the majority of countries in the world gained independence. The rise of China, Japan and Western European countries have created new economic centers to counterbalance the US and change the economic balance. The scientific and technological revolution has accelerated the globalization process, increasing the need for international cooperation. Video ends here. Hello and see you in the next video.